It was the height of the Cold War. Nuclear missiles proliferated on both sides of the Atlantic. Constructing bases in Turkey and Italy, NATO was systematically building an offensive threat aimed at the USSR. The failed Bay of Pigs fiasco of April 61, an armed invasion of Cuba that attempted to overthrow Castro, humiliated U.S. foreign policy, the CIA, and JFK, heightening tensions between the East and West. In October of 62, the Cuban Missile Crisis would push the world to the razor edge of a global nuclear holocaust. Children around the nation were taught to duck and cover. The Nantucket bomb shelter was built expressly for the president, leader of the free world, during these precarious times. Nantucket was chosen as the site because the Kennedy family compound was located close by and could be easily accessed. JFK's time in office was marked by extreme tensions with the communist states. After World War II, politics degenerated into a Cold War marked by the McCarthy era. The Central Intelligence Agency emerged as our government's behind-the-scenes information-gathering arm. As director of the OSS during World War II, Alan Dulles worked in intelligence to undermine the Nazi threat in Europe. As head of the Central Intelligence Agency during the Cold War, he oversaw the Guatemalan coup d'etat, the overthrow of Iran's elected government, the Lockheed U-2 aircraft program, and the Bay of Pigs invasion. In March of 1960, before he left office, President Eisenhower allocated over $13 million to the CIA to plan Castro's overthrow. The agency hired the mafia to assassinate the Cuban leader. The cost? $150,000. In September of 1960, Director Dulles and Deputy Director Richard Bissell initiated talks with two leading figures of the underworld, Johnny Rosselli and Sam Gonciana. The advantage to employing the Mafia was that it provided the CIA with a credible cover story. The underworld was known to be angry with Castro for closing down profitable brothels and casinos in Cuba. If the assassins were killed or captured, the media would accept that they were working for their own purposes. The Mafia agreed to take the contract. These assassination attempts failed, however, and the CIA began working on a direct military assault. The invasion was supported by various Cuban counter-revolutionary forces. The insurgents set sail from Guatemala and Nicaragua on April 17, 1961, in an effort to overthrow the increasingly communistic government of Fidel Castro. Within three days, the invasion collapsed and the thinly veiled disguise of the CIA, backed by U.S. involvement, was obvious to most of the world. The reputation of the agency and its director declined drastically after the Bay of Pigs. The failed coup strengthened Castro's leadership, making him a national hero, as well as foraging closer ties with communism, Khrushchev, and the USSR. After the embarrassment, President Kennedy reportedly said he wanted to splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the winds. In October of 62, it was discovered that Soviet ballistic missiles were being deployed in Cuba. Khrushchev had agreed to Cuba's request to place nuclear missiles in Cuba to deter future harassment. This time of tension is seen by many historians as the closest the human race has ever come to nuclear war between armed nuclear belligerents. This was the zeitgeist during which Nantucket's bomb shelter was constructed. Missile preparations were confirmed when an Air Force U-2 spy plane produced clear photographic evidence of medium-range and intermediate-range ballistic missile facilities. The United States established a military blockade to prevent additional missiles from entering Cuba. They would not permit offensive weapons to be delivered to Cuba and demanded that the weapons already in Cuba be dismantled and returned to the USSR. After tense negotiations, an agreement was reached between Kennedy and Khrushchev. Publicly, the Soviets agreed to dismantle their offensive weapons in Cuba and return them to the Soviet Union. 
In exchange, the U.S. offered a public declaration never to invade Cuba without direct provocation. Secretly, the United States also agreed that it would dismantle all U.S.-built medium-range ballistic missiles deployed in Turkey and Italy, but unknown to the public. RFK, JFK's brother, wrote the book on corruption and organized labor, literally. RFK was relentless in his pursuit of Teamsters Union President Jimmy Hoffa due to Hoffa's known corruption in financial and electoral matters. The enmity between the two men was intense, with accusations of a personal vendetta, a blood feud, exchanged between them. Convictions against organized crime figures rose by 800 percent under RFK's leadership. Due to the belligerent attitudes offered by his military advisors, JFK circumnavigated traditional channels of communication by using backdoors to talk to Khrushchev and Castro. By doing so, he managed to tick off a number of individuals and groups. He angered J. Edgar Hoover because he was planning on retiring the director after the next election. JFK angered LBJ because he planned to drop him from the presidential ticket in 64. Bobby Baker, LBJ's personal secretary, was under congressional scrutiny for scandal. Through this investigation, the legal focus was closing in on Lyndon, who, if implicated, would be facing certain jail time. According to President Kennedy's secretary, Evelyn Lincoln, RFK was also investigating Bobby Baker for tax evasion and fraud. This had reached the point where the president himself discussed the Baker investigation with his secretary, telling her that his running mate in 64 would not be Lyndon Johnson. He angered the heads of the Texas oil industry because he threatened to cut their oil depletion allowance, which had given them tax breaks worth thousands of dollars since the 30s. JFK had proposed plans to submit to Congress a tax reform plan designed to produce about $185,000 million in additional revenues by changes in the favorable tax treatment accorded the gas oil industry. JFK angered the military because he would not go along with their plan to create a false flag event as an excuse to launch a full-scale attack against Cuba as outlined by Operation Northwoods. He removed the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Lyman Lemnitzer. He angered both the military and the oilmen by proposing to bring American troops home by the end of 65. He angered the CIA through their public embarrassment after the Bay of Pigs, firing Dulles, Bissell, and Cable, the three heads of the CIA. Cord Meyer was the head of International Organizations Division and the Directorate of Plans for the CIA. JFK was sleeping with Mary Meyer, Cord Meyer's ex-wife. JFK angered Cord Meyer. As a direct result of his assassination, Hoover and the FBI personally monitored and gathered all evidence concerning the assassination. Hoover kept his job as director of the FBI until his death in 1972. LBJ became president, barring any jail time. The Texas oil men kept their oil depletion allowance tax break through the administration of LBJ. The military got their war in Vietnam. Alan Dulles, the CIA chief fired by Kennedy, was selected by LBJ to become a policy-guiding member of the Warren Commission. Three weeks after the Warren Commission report was released, Mary Meyer, who had been JFK's lover and confidant, was murdered in an unsolved crime. The nuclear fallout bunker in Nantucket represents this moment in time, the peak of the Cold War, when passions ran extreme and the world looked into the abyss of nuclear destruction. For Athena's Web and Nantucket TV, this is Don Sorrell.